Every beef producer should inspect his or her trailer before loading animals. The first thing to look at would be the tires. If tires are worn or old, they need to be replaced. Also, take a close look to see if you have problems with dry rot. Many times uh, those tires are older than we might think they are. If you will look at the DOT serial number that is on the tire, that, those last four digits will indicate the uh, time of manufacturing. It will give you the week and the year. Uh, this particular tire was manufactured during the 12th week of 05, which would mean it was manufactured in March of, of 2005. So again, if we've got tires that are say older than five years of age, we may want to consider getting rid of them because we don't want to have tires that are weak and, and could uh, cause an accident. The other thing we probably need to take a close look at is the tread depth. We don't want that tire to be slick. If we will take a penny, stick down, as we've heard many times, if we uh, cannot see all of uh, Lincoln's head, we know that we've got more than 2 30 seconds of an inch of tread left. If you use a quarter, and you do not see all of uh, the head on that coin, then you will know that there's more than 4 30 seconds of an inch. If you feel like it is uh, necessary to replace the tires, we need to be sure and replace uh, those with tires comparable to what actually came on the trailer. By all means, do not use a passenger car tire uh, on a trailer because we simply do not have the strength. Use a tire that has the LT or ST prior to the size on the trailer. Those will have heavier tire cords and will be able to withstand the pressure and the torture that they would have being on a trailer. The next thing we need to do is check the tire pressure. Uh, tires need to be properly inflated so that they can handle the load that we're going to be putting on the trailer. If uh, it's low, we need to inflate it to the recommended pressure. And while we're doing the inflation on the trailer tires, we also need to check the spare to be sure that we do have adequate pressure in it. So we need a good heavy uh, jack that can handle not only the weight of the trailer, but the uh, weight of the animals that would be inside that trailer. And the other thing we always need to do with that jack or uh, block, if that's what we're pulling it up on, is to have it where it's readily accessible. If it's up in the front compartment of that gooseneck and the only way in is through the trailer uh, and it's full of cattle, that's going to make for a very difficult situation. The next thing that we need to do is periodically check the uh, axle to see that the bearings are in good shape. So we would pop the hubcap off, pull the tire off, check that bearing to see if it's loose or worn. If there is a problem, go ahead and get that corrected because the last thing we want to happen is to have a breakdown while we we're out on the road. The next thing we need to check is the wiring on the trailer. We need to look to see if there are any broken wires, any wires that uh, may be frayed that, that would need to be replaced or uh, at least taped. Uh, we need to be sure that all the lights on the trailer are working properly. Those lights make it much easier for other drivers to spot this vehicle after dark. The next thing while we're up at this end of the trailer, we need to take a look and see if those safety chains are adequate to, to secure that uh, trailer to the truck in case there was something to happen to the hitch. In this case, uh, I think we're, we're in really good shape for this truck and trailer. While we're up here at this uh, portion of the truck, let's take a look in the toolbox and we can see where we not only have a jack available that's adequate to lift the uh, trailer, but we also have a safety triangle that can be put out in case we were to have a flat or be disabled on the side of the highway. If we do have a breakdown, we need to put a reflector out. It's recommended that this reflector be approximately 100 feet back behind the trailer. You might want to give consideration to buying a, a safety kit. They're uh, available at a lot of the local auto supply stores. Uh, this particular one here has got a number of compartments with a lot of different things in it. Uh, here uh, we've got a small compressor, we have flashlights, we have a reflective triangle. I think in another compartment there's a tow rope, uh, jumper cables, so there's a lot of different things. And even if we accidentally uh, bumper finger, knock some skin off, we've got a first aid kit, which can be very handy too.
We've taken time to inspect the outside of the trailer and feel comfortable that it is capable of hauling cattle. Now we need to look on the inside. We need to be sure that this trailer does have good footing for the animal and also we need to be sure that in, if it's a metal trailer that we don't have rusty spots to where those animals might end up putting that extra pressure on and, and actually putting a foot through it. We also need to check the, the gates inside to be sure that they're in good shape and not extremely rusty. If we have a wooden trailer, we need to be sure that those boards have not become weakened over time. We need to try to keep uh, that manure out of it as much as we can. That will help from a disease control standpoint. Two or three inches of manure in a trailer may weigh as much as two or three calves. So this means that you've got extra weight that that truck has to pull. That's going to increase uh, the cost of, of pulling that trailer and it may actually cause the trailer to be overloaded. Also check the brake pads. Be sure that you have adequate pad available. Test the brakes out to be sure that they are working properly. The last thing we need to do before loading our cattle is to select the route that we're going to take to the other farm or to the uh, market. We need to try to find a route where we'll have a minimum amount of traffic, as few sharp turns as possible, and also try to avoid those roads that will require a lot of frequent stops. Try to drive at a relatively constant speed. Rapid acceleration or deceleration can cause animals to lose their balance. This can result in injury or even some bruising. The last thing you want to do is have your cattle slipping and falling because you're driving too fast or in a careless manner.